Hello everybody, I welcome you all back to another episode on the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and today I got a very special location for you. I'm still in the state of Georgia and yesterday by searching on Google Maps we found one of the most incredible places that the United States has to offer. And I was just talking to the owner of this local business over here and he told me the full story of the people that once lived there. So let's go there right now and let's see what's left behind. In a secluded corner of Georgia lies a mysterious and eerie property, once owned by an elderly American man named Terry. This land was a haven for hunting and family gatherings. Together, Terry and his children explored the sprawling 110 acres, creating cherished memories. However, when Terry unfortunately passed away in a car accident in 2019, his children found themselves in a legal battle, unable to agree on the property's future. As a result, they were prohibited from entering and the place remains abandoned to this day. Now silence hangs heavy on the land. Nature reclaims the territory, engulfing it in overgrowth and decay. What secrets lie within these forgotten walls? And what stories do the winds whisper through the desolate surroundings? Join us on this journey and together we will unlock the mysteries of this forsaken place, delving into its past and breathing life into its forgotten memories. So all the land here behind the property, the 110 acres, every direction you look in was all owned by Terry who passed away and the children that are left behind and they can decide on what to do and how to split this place and the property and the land that's around it. It's very unfortunate because it's an enormous mansion as you can see behind me and there are so many valuable and beautiful memories and artifacts left behind in here. And it's slowly falling apart as you can see. Vegetation is growing everywhere. The paint is shipping off. These beautiful columns, they are falling apart. You would see these columns as well in the European Union when you explore places. But over here, they are made of wood. As of, as of in Europe, they would be made of marble or stone. And that's a different type of building style, but I really like it actually. Most houses that I've encountered here yet in the United States seem to be all made of wood. And it gives a very charming and beautiful appearance to the house itself. Wow. We're now going to go inside of the place and I'm going to show you what's left behind in there. There are a few barns here, but this one seems to be locked. And that's probably a dog shed over there. And we have another dog shed here in front of the property as well. This one is actually made of stone. Quite interesting. Oh, and one more thing. When you look underneath the building, you can look all the way through it. It has no basement and it's built on stone supports. Okay, let's make our way inside of this place and let's check out what's left behind in there. Ooh, let's open up this door and then we come onto the patio of this place where the family, after a long day of hunting, could sit together, enjoy themselves, maybe have a barbecue or something like that. We don't know, you can see the sofa still standing here, a frame of a bed, 
also here at the end. And don't worry, warning protected by burglar alarm, we got actually permission to go into this place. We asked the man from the local business that I just talked about if we could go inside of this place. There's also for some weird reason a fridge here on the outside. Maybe they could store some beers in there when they were done hunting and they had a great day they could grab a beer or maybe they would store the meat from the deers that they shot in the forest around this place. This is going to be the wonderful doorway that we're going to take inside of this place and let me show you what it looks like. Whew. Spiderwebs already all the way around the door. Oh, before I go inside, let's do something. I almost forgot before going inside of this place, I always put on my gloves to protect the artifacts and the items that are inside of there. I want to leave the place behind, like I find it. If I touch something and I display something, I always put it back and I think that's very important when you explore abandoned places to just show respect to them. They once used to be of somebody and yeah, that's respect just needs to be shown. Okay. Now we are ready to explore this beautiful place. Let's put on my backpack. Let's go. Oh, I just noticed actually something here on the porch. Okay, that's quite interesting. There's a horn of a deer left here. One of the last things that the people shot that came to this place. And also a jacket of a hunter as well. Are you all ready to enter inside? this wonderful place who is actually very exciting see around the doorway people haven't been in this place for a long time the spider webs are already completely covering it let's open the door knob and let's go inside wow what a homely kitchen i feel at home immediately when i enter into here just wonderful to see okay everybody let's go around let me show you What's still in here? Everything is still in here and yeah. This used to be a hunting lodge, so people didn't live in this place, but they came here regularly to enjoy themselves over the weekend maybe with the entire family together. And this would be a very yeah, lovely place to be in. A lot of communal, uh, a lot of talking, uh, a lot of great time people had in this place. Let's start off over here. As you can see, when I open the cabinets, Everything is still in there, from their foods to their cleaning products. The pinto beans that are in here. Let's look at the date that's on here. And we have the year 062120. Uh, so it's from, uh, it expires in the year 2000, uh, 2020. And that could be very true. Beans stay good for about a year. So uh, yeah, then the story is about right. They are not allowed to come in here anymore and that's very unfortunate. There are some memories left behind that they most likely would have had in their own home if they were able to take them out. But they are not allowed to come in here anymore. The towels are still on top of the sink. Everything is still here. I suppose if I open this up... No, the water doesn't run anymore. Oh, I hear something now. The water, the water still runs actually. Wow, that's insane. That's totally insane. It's not been abandoned for that long, so yeah, they never shut it off. Okay, the coffee makers, the cups where they drank from. Let's see what time the clock has stopped. At quarter before 11, the clock has stopped forever in this place. A very welcoming sign, the deer down there hopping over a fence in the woods. <sighs> they even went to the store to buy like this big pack of water, but they never got to use it. Very unfortunate to leave it behind. Pots and pans still in the cabinets. Have a look at this. Everything is still there from the day they came to this place. The cooking stove and everything. But what's quite strange about it is, when I first came in here, I saw that they put a lock onto the electricity cabinet. So they don't want anybody touching it, even not people that come in here with the wrong intentions. And uh, when I was just walking inside of this place, the boiler just switched on and uh, it got me very scared actually. 
And, but when I tried to put on the lights in this place, they don't function anymore. So that's probably something to do with the electricity cabinet over there. And uh, they just switched that off. I'm not gonna switch that on, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Here we have the dining table where the people came together and had a lovely meal. Talked about different things, probably hunting the most. Hmm. Some lovely pictures here on the wall as well. Some kittens, a girl taming the geese. And this is actually a very ancient antique piece that we have down here. It's called a washing table. I'm gonna put this away carefully. Later on, I'm gonna put it back. But as you can see over here, we have this mirror and this used to be a little washing table as you could see and you have this, this pot over there down below and you could fill it with water. And back in the day when people didn't have sinks and running water, they used this to wash their face before they went into bed in the evening or in the morning. Very interesting piece of furniture in my opinion. A little cabinet to the side, some chairs in there, some other stuff, but not very interesting. I must say, I really adore the decorations that they have put up throughout the house. Up there we can see some porcelain elephants on top of this cabinet. And down below we have all these fake flowers hanging from the side. That is actually a thing because this is a hunting lodge and people didn't come here often. They only came here maybe once every two weeks and of course real flowers wouldn't survive. So we saw beans over there, water, all things that stay long for a good time. Because yeah, they didn't come here often and uh, when they came here they wanted to, this place to be very homely and to feel immediately at home. A lovely cutting board with some fruits, a nice artifact to put on the wall. You can see inside of these places there's also always woodwork exposed. And this is the next room of the place. Let's enter inside. What a wonderful room. The first thing I notice in here is that the ceilings are very high. Probably around 4 meters or something like 12 feet. 12? Yeah, I'm right about that. Insane. This is a sitting area where the people came at night or in the evening after a long day of hunting and they told their stories around the fireplace. Hey, Terry, what kind of animals did you see today in the, in the forest? I shot a deer and conversations like that would happen in here. But also maybe some TV watching, we can see the television is also still here. And this one is very unique because it has antennas still attached to it. I can remember from back in the day, my parents, when I was very little, they had antennas attached to the TV and also aluminium foil on the top of it to probably get better signal. Quite crazy. Let's see if there's anything left in these drawers. Whoa, this one completely falls apart. But it's empty at this point. Some fake ivy on the wall, as you can see. And over all throughout this house, they put up decorations. Hmm. Definitely Roman Catholic people as well. You can see some religious artifacts displayed on the wall over here. And the fruits back there. Still life, cross. A wonderful painting. This is not a replica, I think. This is painted by someone. You can even see there's a signature to the side here. I love this sitting area. This setup is quite cute, as I can see. And uh, these couches here in the United States, I must love them because whenever you sit in a couch here in the United States, you completely sink into it and you're ready to take a nap, actually. I love it. And we have these lamps next to it. Two identical lamps. And they have some vintage things on there. You can see a Ford Model T displayed here on the lamp. People at work. These are all old school factories and establishments displayed on this lamp. More fake flowers down here to give this place a very homely feeling. And then a table. Oh, is this a puzzle? Wow. 
this is a very lovely puzzle of a barn somewhere in the United States. This is definitely not in the county in the state of Georgia. There are a lot of mountains behind it and they actually never finished the puzzle. They put some pieces together, but they never finished it, unfortunately. Okay, let's put this beauty back. Here we have some booklets about the hunting season and the regulations. Lovely. Oh, I love this room. Quite a unique piece. Okay, let's move on now to the next one. And this actually seems to be a bedroom. There are three beds in here. At, at some top points, maybe 10 to 20 people would sleep inside of this place. You can see a double bed here, two single beds there, maybe for the children. Multiple families also lived here because Terry had multiple children uh, and these children probably also had children. And they definitely came with them as well. But here to the left of us, we got a very special artifact. We got a deer head hanging on the wall. And it's actually the first one of its kind that I'm seeing in the United States. Even though deer heads are, yeah, people hunt a lot around here and probably a lot of people have deer heads hanging in their houses. This is the first one I saw in an abandoned place. Oh, a wonderful deer head, a very big animal. It used to be very impressive. Wow. Let me show this one to you in detail. And down below we see some more artifacts. A statue of an angel holding a harp, playing away. Wow. Also a fireplace in this room. I'm wondering if they ever, yeah, they're definitely lit it up. You can see there are smoke, smoke marks and there's still some residue of a last fire in here. But they put this nice decoration in there to give it some charm, but I didn't light it. Huh. And also an oil burner to the side here. We have this television stand on here, a Filco one, again with an antenna attached to it. <laughs> I can't imagine using a television like that anymore. I actually have to admit that I haven't watched television in years. That's something I don't do anymore. The only thing I do is watch YouTube. Okay, we have some drawers over here. Let's see if there's anything left in these ones. Got a few jackets, some booklets. See the one below, some blankets, not really interesting. More blankets, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but uh, you get the idea. Hunting caps as well. The old grudge, military surplus. Wow. Ken Wilson Ford, still made beds. Very impressive to see. Wow. Then we got a snowy countryside over here. Maybe this is Georgia as well. This is definitely not the house that we are in today, but uh, it looks a like a very lovely picture. More hunting caps down here. And then we got this drawer to the side. Let's look in a few more of these drawers to see if we have anything. Hunting jackets, definitely everything that is stored in here has to be related to hunting or something to do with it. No, nothing that's of interest for us. Okay, brace yourselves everybody because now we're gonna wander into the most impressive room of this entire hunting lodge. Welcome into the hallway. Check out this. There are multiple deer heads on the walls of this place. This is where the people came inside of the lodge, where they got this enormous impression. Here to the right, we have a deer head. In front of us, we have four, and you can immediately feel that hunting atmosphere when you come into this place. I was impressed when I first saw this hallway, and I really wanted to film and document this abandoned structure. This is the front door of the place. You can see, you can look over the fields at the front with the columns the front porch, which I'm going to show you later on in the video. And then you can pan around, you can walk through this hallway and be impressed by it. 
Also over here, they put some lovely flowers on the wall. You have some benches down below, upholstered benches to either side of it. This is actually a cushion, cushion bench. And just the atmosphere that I get from this room is impressive. These are some tweaks. Okay, these are dorns, my most feared uh, and a feared plant when I'm exploring. Every single time when you explore an abandoned place, you encounter this plant and it stings you when you try to go closer to the place. Down below we have <laughs> what's inside of this box. No freaking way. This is a deer. This is a fake deer actually that you com can completely assemble from plastic and it's probably to attract other deers so you can shoot them. No freaking way. It's still boarded up with plastic so I'm not gonna take it out of the box but what an impressive item. I've actually never seen something like this before. Wow. Okay, we can even see like hunters over there and they have the fake deer and then they can shoot it. Uh, can shoot when uh, real deers come over and that are interested in seeing what this thing is. A lamp post here to the side. I also got a bench in the hallway where they could sit, probably also welcome some guests inside, give them a drink. Beautiful poster on the wall. And then we have multiple grand deers hanging over here. It's actually deer hunting season at this moment. So we have to be careful whenever we go into the woods because over here a lot of people shoot and a lot of people hunt and they might mistake you for an animal and shoot you. The person that we were talking to that uh, looks over this place, he also told us uh, to be very careful because a lot of people get shot every single year by hunters that uh, mistake you for an animal and are just careless. Up there, we got another one, very high up. Impressive, looking over this hallway. And then we got one more, looking us straight in this face from the left. What a beautiful animal. I myself, I could ne never shoot one of these animals. But if it's done sustainably, I can agree to it. And uh, it's better than buying meat from the grocery shop if you eat every single piece from the animal. This is the back door that we didn't came in through. But over here we have a very old vacuum machine, a dirt devil, a backless power. We don't have that type of vacuum machine over in Europe. Some more artifacts down here. I would call this a Bambi down below. Lovely table to the side. And a lot of heaters as well dispersed through this place. Okay, let's go. Oh. Oh my god, <laughs> this is actually the deer that I was just talking about, a deer in pieces. They took it out of the box, they probably took it to the field to hunt with. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy to see, wow, fascinating, I'm gonna put this all back. This is the body of the deer. And then we have the horns over here. Does this still fit in there? Ah, okay, I'm gonna put it all back later. Let's go further. Because now we have another bedroom to cover. And as I told you, many people came over. The family itself, Terry, his family, the children of the children, and uh, they would all sleep in these places. Probably two people slept in this bed, two more in this, and then four children around here. So we can already start counting more. So we already had four, five, six, seven, and then we have nine, and then we have 11 and 13 people were already sleeping in this place when we count this bedroom. Chandelier above us attached to that very high ceiling. Wow. I love that all the beds are still made that everything is still left behind from the time that they came here and hunted. On the wall we have another very impressive deer head. It would be very lovely if every single family of the children of Terry would have his own room 
and they put their most impressive animal on the walls of it. How cool would have that been? Maybe that's the case because we saw already a deer head in this bedroom and in the other bedroom. We have one more bedroom to cover and let's see what kind of deer head we have over there. A wonderful clock standing here on top of the fireplace. Wow. You couldn't light this fireplace anymore. It would totally burn the bed that's next to it. See what kind of artifacts we have more in here. Some very big flashlights, probably to go into the forest and see if there's anything, or maybe to search for an animal that was just shot. Let's open a few more drawers. Not nothing really of interest in here. Okay, beautiful bedroom. Let's move on to the next one. Here we come into a little corridor. Let's go through here. To the right of us, we see the bathroom for everybody that would be in this place. So if there were 20 people in this place, they would all use this bathroom and this single toilet. Crazy. Nice picture on the wall over here. Let's see if the water of the shower still runs. Now I'm really curious to check everything. Maybe the toilet still flushes. Yeah, this toilet sort of flushes, but not like very nicely. Beautiful curtains around here. The last washing cloths are also left behind. Wow. Okay. We also have like this doorway in front of us here. Let's open this beauty up and let's see. Oh, there's a coat hanging in there. Wow power cord down below and to the right of us here we have the last bedroom and to me this is actually the most charming place the most charming bedroom of this entire household as you can see we have pink walls all around very cool to see and again we were stopped at 13 so we got 15 17 19 people sleeping in this hunting lodge that would have been very very crowded back in the day we can see some deterioration up there on the walls. A little bit of mold going around the corner, but not much. This place could definitely be restored and brought back to life once they figure out how to split everything that's in here. And in this one, unfortunately, we don't have a deer head hanging on the wall. So, or this side of the family didn't shot a deer or yeah, it was just hanging in the hallway or something like that. My story isn't correct. <laughs> posted private property. So they probably would have posted this somewhere where they were hunting and their name and address would be on here. Big lamp again in front of it. And we have another beautiful piece. Beautiful uh, crown, a crans, a crans. I'm not sure how you call this in English actually. I would call it a kranz with, uh, with flowers, but I'm not uh, sure how you would call it in English. So leave that down in the comment section. A lovely fireplace in front of us as well. Even the shoes that they used to go in the field with are still here. A mirror, drawers down below. Wow, what a place everybody. What a place. Oh, I gotta show you this clock as well. It looks... Beautiful eagle on the top. So after having documented the full inside, I'm now gonna show you how the outside of this place looks like. So let's go. And actually we can go through the front port door over here onto the front porch. You can open this one up. This opens up as well. We go pull this back behind us. And now we are on the front porch of this place, as you can see. Here the people could sit outside, enjoy themselves. As you can see, the sun is slowly setting in the countryside. They got to overlook the surrounding areas. Their hunting pavilion, as you could say. Here you can see those pillars also coming back. That sort of European design inside of this building. 
I love it, I must say. The wooden pillars. I've never seen it before, but wow. What a unique piece. There's vegetation over everywhere. This place has been taken over. You can see over here as well. The window has already broken. They tried to fix it with duct tape. Hmm. After only a few years of abandonment. Let's jump down and let's check out this place from the front. From the road you would say that it's sort of a farmhouse slash a little bit of a mansion. It's just a wonderful building that we have over here. Wow. What a beauty, especially with the sunlight now shining on it. That orange glow that we have on there. But we're right next to a very busy road. A lot of cars driving by. So you're probably gonna hear that in the video. Let me sit down for a moment because I want to thank you all for watching this week's video. What a fantastic hunting lodge and what a fantastic place for the United States. I'm really happy that we found this one. I want to thank Terry, I want to thank his family and I hope they find the purpose for this building and they resolve their issues and that they can revive this beautiful place that we have here behind us. If you like this wonderful exploration, Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here, like the video and write me a nice comment what you thought about this place. There's also a link in the description for Patreon, there you can support the channel and help us out going around the world. And with that all said, I want to thank you very very much for watching this week's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye, I love you very much.